Hi everybody, Joe here from Shutterspeak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling faces again here on YouTube. So, in case you haven't been following along, Nikon has released new firmware for the Z9 today. That's firmware 2.1. Um, you can download that today, put it on your memory card and install it. And by tomorrow, it should be out on Snapbridge and you should be able to install it via Snapbridge tomorrow. So it's always one day behind Snapbridge. So a couple of things in this firmware, um, some improvements to autofocus, especially with tracking smaller subjects and better eye and face tracking, uh, especially from a distance. But we're not really gonna touch upon that. I wanna talk about the new feature that's been added to 2.1 and that is high frequency flicker reduction. So what is high frequency flicker reduction? Well, it's a problem that you may or may not know that you had, but essentially Flickr, not the old photo sharing website, not that Flickr. Flickr is basically like a, a strobing light that, the, that is timed with the sensor that basically causes you know, strobing within uh, the photo. And this, this happens a lot with LED lights. Um, it's very common with LED advertising boards, things like that. So. You may see this more if, say, you're a concert photographer or a sports photographer and there are LED um, advertising signs in the background. This used to happen a lot when I used to shoot hockey. The boards, they would have LED advertising in the boards and they would be out of sync with the shutter and sometimes only parts of the advertisement would be illuminated. And you know, occasionally, if you happen to get very, very lucky, you might get one where the board was fully illuminated, but that was just like winning lotto basically. So within the camera now is this new feature, high frequency flicker reduction. It's not a cure-all, it works, but it works only in certain parameters. I'm gonna show you how to set it up, how it works and when it doesn't work. Okay, but before we start that, I'd just like to say, Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. If this video helps you out, please help me out by hitting like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you get notified of future updates on this channel. Thank you very much for that. It's something that you can do that's nice for me. I really appreciate it. And best of all, it doesn't cost you anything, it's free. So you get to do something nice for someone for free. How often does that happen? Okay, so a few things you need to know about flicker reduction. First off, there's no menu setting for it. You do have to program a, uh, a custom control. So in other words, one of the function buttons or any programmable button, uh, you're gonna do that by going to custom controls and F2. You're going to go there and you'll pick and assign a button that you want this option to be on. So essentially what's gonna happen is you're gonna hit that button. Uh, it's gonna activate, hit it again, it shuts it off. It is not assignable to the I menu. Unfortunately, I wish it was, but it's not. You do have to take up a button with it. I think really there should be an on off switch in the menu, but hey, Nikon giveth and Nikon don't giveth, I guess. So at any rate, uh, a few things that you need to know about. Okay, this option enables you to tweak your shutter speeds uh, to fine tune it in increments as small as 1 96th of an EV at speeds between one eight thousandth of a second and one thirtieth of a second. So go below one thirtieth of a second, this option doesn't work. Go above one eight thousandth of a second, this option does not work. Okay, uh, the other thing you need to know is it only works in shutter priority mode or manual mode. Obviously it can't work in aperture priority mode because well, you can't control the shutter speed in that mode. And same with program mode, even though you can override it, still it doesn't work in that mode. So shutter speed, or manual mode only, please. All right. Okay, so we are here in the custom controls menu. That is the little pencil and you're gonna swing on down to F controls. From there, head on over to F2, custom controls, shooting. It only works in the photo shooting uh, menu. It doesn't work for video. And you can see here, I have function three currently programmed to high frequency flicker. You can pretty much program it to any button that you'd like, including some of the lens buttons. Maybe not the lens rings, but most buttons you can program this to. 
So uh, you see here, I have it and you can just pick it out of this list and set it to whatever control uh, works best for you with your particular workflow. All right, before we move forward, just a quick warning. The next sequence is gonna display some strobing lights. So if that's not good for you, maybe think about not watching this next section. All right, so strobe warning ahead. Okay, so we're at one two hundredth of a second and we're about to switch to high frequency flicker reduction. There it is. And you see our shutter speed is 203.2. Here we go up to 250th and you see now it does not work at 250th of a second. It really has no effect. So we need to be below uh, 200. You see at 160, it works pretty well, switching to 161.3. But out of 500th, again, no effect here. So it's really about finding that sweet spot. And in this case, it's going to be at 1 200th of a second or so and below. So it's really about finding the sweet spot. You see how well that works at 1 25th, 1 125th of a second. But if you wanted to shoot above 200th of a second, it's just not going to happen. Once you go above 1 200th of a second, you're gonna get flicker. So it doesn't work for every situation, but it definitely does work. Uh, just keep your eye on that shutter speed there. There you go. 200 works really well when we go to 203. Once we go above 200 to 250th or so, you see we, we just it just starts to fall apart and there's just not much you can do with it. So again, it's about finding that sweet spot and sticking with it. All right, so you can see there that Clearly we can eliminate the flicker, but say for example, we wanted to photograph that car at one one thousandth of a second. It's just not gonna happen. The flicker reduction would not take effect above 100, 1 250th of a second. Now that's not to say this is gonna be the situation in every case. In, every, in other cases, you may need to go significantly higher to remove the flicker or lower. But in this case, the sweet spot was right around 125th of a second, 200th of a second, somewhere in there, uh, really hit uh, hit that spot and eliminated the flicker. But again, you know, at that point, we're pretty much forced to shoot at that shutter speed. So we would kind of have to adapt uh, to that. If, if we were shooting moving vehicles and we needed to freeze motion, but we also wanted to stop the flicker at the same time, well, you know, again, it's just going to be a, a little bit of luck that you don't hit the flicker at that same instant as your shutter. Uh, flicker reduction, or this high, the high frequency flicker reduction feature probably isn't going to help us there. All right, folks, thanks for watching. I appreciate you as always. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, if anything in this video helps you out, please help me out by hitting that subscribe button. Um, of course, leave me a comment. If you follow this channel, you know, I answer almost everybody. Uh, I try my best to get to all of the comments, especially when the video is new. Um, that's that's when I'm kind of uh, focused on it most, but I do try and answer anything, even with the older videos. So, hey, thanks for being here. I, I appreciate you. And until I see you next time, bye-bye, YouTube.